Jeffrey Smith is with us tonight. He is home. He is usually out gallivanting all over the planet trying to do things to help people live longer and stay healthier, and that is, of course, fighting the GMO battle. Hello, Jeff. Welcome back. Thank you so much, Jeff. I was thinking earlier today of how many Americans are about to sit down to their annual holiday feast and how much of it will be GMO. We could think about anything with corn in it. Any corn product, of course, is is obvious. Corn, and then we got what cottonseed, canola oil. Is canola GM? I guess it is. Most of it, isn't it? Yes, ninety uh, percent. Yeah, which means the canola oil is definitely GM unless they have marked it organic or non-GMO. Right, right. So, but turkeys, even though they're packed full of all kinds of toxic foodstuffs and antibiotics, I guess are still traditional. Most of them. I don't know. It's a it's a tough call. People just don't have a clue. I look in the stores when I go in there, which is not too often, and it's a fairly large market I, I shop at, which has a tremendous organic, probably 30% organic, real organic, and the rest is traditional. But I look for people reading labels. I'm seeing it a little bit, but not as much as I'd like to see. And now you have a lot of material, and I hope all of you will look at the links under Jeff's name and Go click on them because the data there can literally save lives. It's it's no joke. We've got uh, a lot of material there for all of you folks to help you and your loved ones live healthier and happier. Go ahead. Um, a number of years ago, I actually uh, did some work for a non-GMO organization before I started my own and went to the supermarket and looked for all the things that would be kept in a or used in a dinner. Uh-huh. And the one item that I found that was non-GMO was a can of pumpkin, and the ingredients were pumpkin, and that was it. Gee. Uh, the the um, stuffing. That's, that's amazing in and of itself, to have one ingredient on I a know, can of something. I know, it was remarkable. Uh, I went to the stuffing, and of course, it's a, it's a processed food. It has lots and lots of oh, yeah. ingredients, including uh, probably soy flour and High fructose corn syrup, the cranberry sauce had high fructose corn syrup. Well, natural flavors, you know, it's always. Yeah, yeah exactly. Of course, the turkey said GMO. Uh, the gravy, I mean, anything that you buy in a box um, usually contains a GM ingredient. Not always, but usually. So um, people can avoid GMOs, um, and they have to shop in places. I mean, it's, it's better to shop in healthy, natural food places where they have organic, but you can still figure out ways to avoid GMOs, even in a standard supermarket. I did some research and picked up um, ragu spaghetti sauce off the counter and looked at the ingredients and found that ragu chunky had high fructose corn syrup and soybean oil, both genetically modified, but ragu light had olive oil. And so Hmm. it was non-GMO, even Mm -hmm. though it didn't say non-GMO, and it didn't Mm -hmm. say organic. But these are examples of how you can shop and avoid the at-risk ingredients, in this case, without without paying anything extra or even shopping anywhere special. Well, that, requires, course, yeah. that requires a little education. And, and I just want to point out, excuse the interruption, but this is the perfect time to do it. Please look under Jeffrey's name, the non-GMO shopping guide. This is essential. You folks cannot make it without this. I'm not kidding you. You cannot make it without this guide. It's that simple. Go ahead. I'm sorry for the interruption. No, I think we've covered it. I, I think, um, you know, I what I did um, recently in, in Seattle is I gave a whole talk to people how to structure a lifestyle that makes it easier to avoid GMOs. And we talked about avoiding GMOs in restaurants. You don't know what the hell is on your plate if you go to a restaurant. That's almost impossible. What? Well, here's the here's the it's true you can't you can't guarantee that you're going to get what you want, but here's the ways to maximize the likelihood that you're avoiding GMOs. Um, first of all, you can't go to fast food places because everything is processed and probably contains oh, yeah. derivative of soy and corn. Sure. So you go to places that cook from scratch. Now, if, you, if they cook from scratch, many of the GMOs are visible and clearly um, noticeable on the menu. Um, corn. Corn tortillas, corn chips, polenta, things like that, corn on the cob. Mm-hmm. Corn on the cob, the percentage of GMOs is less, but it's still there's still a small percentage. Monsanto wants to introduce, it's, it's introducing its sweet corn right now. It's sold the seeds 
for planting, um, and the, a lot of NGOs are trying to stop it. But their their particular sweet corn is both produced uh, designed to produce a toxic insecticide called BT, right, uh, and as well as to withstand doses of the herbicide Roundup, so you'll get both toxins as you eat the corn, the Roundup in the kernels as well as the BT toxin. Terrific. So it's, yeah, it's horrible. So um, if in order to avoid the invisible GM ingredient going out to restaurants, the main invisible ingredient is the cooking oil, and most cooking oils are genetically modified. There's four GM cooking oils that are, that are genetically modified. Uh-huh. Soybean oil, corn oil, cottonseed oil, and canola oil. Sure. Now, if you buy olive oil, that's not genetically modified, but as you know, a lot of olive oil coming from the Mediterranean has been spiked with non-olive oil in order to sell it, to make more money. So they bring in a lot of canola oil into Italy, for example, which gets mixed with olive oil and sent out. But that canola oil would not be GMO. It's probably grown in Europe as what they call oil seed rape, which is not genetically modified in Europe. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So even though it's not pure olive oil, it's probably not genetically modified. Mm-hmm. Um, if you if you co- eat with, if you're okay with using butter, you can always ask the the chef to cook your product with olive oil or butter or no oil, or maybe they have other oils available. Mm-hmm. And so you have to navigate around the cooking oil and also around the salad dressing because most salad dressings oh. will be GMO oh. unless it has pure olive oil. Yeah. Now, you, quick question: right? If they come back and say we only use Pure vegetable oil here to cook with, which is a standard line. What right. do we th- What do we say? Vegetable oil in the United States means soybean. So vegetable oil is soybean oil. They may think it comes from a vegetable, <laughs> but if you read the ingredients, it's soybean oil. Correct. Uh, an- another source for restaurants is the mayonnaise, because that comes from soybean oil. Ooh. Uh, and so to, uh, by the way, popcorn is non-GMO, and it's not. It doesn't even. Con- get cross-pollinated with field corn. There's no commercial popcorn that's been genetically modified in our past. It doesn't cross-pollinate, so it is fine, depending on what oil is used to cook it. Really? So popcorn is okay. Now, I've been concerned for some time that popcorn was GM because it's, you know, it's not blue corn, it's yellow corn. Interesting. Now, popcorn is non-GMO. Blue corn is not genetically modified either, but if you buy blue corn chips, it can have contamination from yellow corn, and so there have been blue corn that's been tested as containing GMOs, uh, so it's not pure. Mm-hmm. Um, another uh, uh, thing to look out for in restaurants are breads, because sometimes they use oils for bread, oh, yeah. or, or, and if it's commercial bread, it could have soy flour uh, as well. Now, I tend to call restaurants in advance before I go and ask them, what oil do you cook with, and can you you have entrees that you can cook without your oil. And what I found is this, and that you probably can guess this, that um, Mexican food is difficult, sometimes impossible. <laughs> uh, Chinese is the same way, sometimes mm-hmm. Japanese, depending if they have sushi. Um, so that's because they cook everything in vegetable oil in these restaurants, and in Mexican, you also have a lot of corn tortillas. Right. Um, with Indian, you can sometimes find a non- vegetable oil uh, restaurant, I'd say 30% of the time you're you're fine. And you can also sometimes get them to cook things special for you, but sometimes they cook everything in advance and prepare these sauces and stuff, and you're out of luck. With Thai food, um, the curries are typically cooked in coconut milk instead of vegetable oil. So I would say 80% of Thai restaurants, you can order curries that are non-GMO, um, but sometimes they'll, they'll stir-fry the vegetables in oil as well as cooking them in the coconut. You have to ask them. When a company, when an organization tells you they use olive oil, the first question you ask is, is it pure? Because a lot of companies, a lot of restaurants will use cutting it a now. blend. They'll yeah. cut it with canola oil. Mm-hmm. And in one case, I know uh, soybean oil. So you ask, is it pure olive oil? And sometimes in the back kitchen, they'll have uh, the blend, mm-hmm. uh, but for the salad dressing... Mm-hmm. They'll use pure. So if you ask, is your salad dressing pure? Mm-hmm. They'll say, oh, yes, it is. You remind them, and then they can bring it, and they can use that. I know some people that actually bring their own oil in unopened mini bottles so that they can hand the oil huh. to the restaurant to cook with. 
because it's unopened, they come to the restaurant feels comfortable with it. Um, and you, people bring their own soy sauce packets as well, they're from organic, non-GMO soy.